Hello, welcome to my tech fan. TomTop sent me a laser engraver for the testing and this is Sweetol E24 Pro. This is 24 watt real optical power dyed laser. It is able to move on 36,000 mm per minute speed, but uh, usually we have to use a little bit lower speed because we have the limitation of the engraving possibility. Now, separately, I got a air assist kit. This is the pump, but also this is the air assist nozzle and some pipe because uh, originally this doesn't arrive with the air assist pump. I suggested them to sell these two things together because uh, this uh, 24 watts you want to use for the cutting too. But cutting of the wood is much safer if you have uh, the pump with the air assist because it uh, reduces the risk of the flame. As always, a uh, few words about the safety. Don't forget that these are tools, not toys, which require some safety equipment. The most important, uh, because this is some open laser engraver, are safety glasses, but not only for the operator, but for everybody in that room. You have to use it in a good ventilated room, or if you use it regularly in some kind of enclosure and exhaust those fumes outside of that room. And never leave the engraving, especially during the cutting, without the attention, okay? Uh, of course, uh, using the air assist will reduce the risk of the catching the flame, but even then you should always supervise your engraving or cutting. This is the content of the air assist kit box. I'm already familiar with this type, not too strong, but very quiet. It is adjustable, but it also gets the power separately. This means it cannot be operated by the software. It's pity because for the engraving you want to do it without air assist and only for the cutting you have to use the air. Also, we get this pipe and uh, air assist nozzle because somehow we have to get that air near the laser module. And now let's see what's in the main box. This was the content of the main box. So we have some power cable, safety glasses, the power supply unit. The output is 24 volts and uh, 5 amperes. We have some bolts, uh, Allen keys, key antenna, USB drive. This is the laser module with optical power between 20 and 24 watts and uh, it is already equipped with air assist nozzle. You can see it here and input for the air is here so we don't have to use the one which arrived with the air assist kit. What I'm missing from this kit is actually some kind of plate which will protect your desktop. This is my own and don't forget the aluminum is always better compared to the steel and if you want to do the cutting then some kind of honeycomb bed or something like that. This is a disassert for setting the focus and we have two steps. For the engraving it is 8 millimeters. In that case the focus will be set to the top of the surface. But if you want to do the cutting the focus will be a little bit deeper in the material when we are using this 4 millimeter distancer. Let's take a closer look. So the linear motion is with these uh, linear bar bearings and the uh, rods and uh, I cannot really measure them but they look very strong. At least 12 millimeter in diameter or something like that. On X axis they use these metallic wheels. I really like this drag chain and a very interesting feature is this connection for the air on two points. So uh, we don't have to connect the air assist pipe directly to the module, but we have co connected here and only from here it goes to the module. So with this we have much nicer cable or pipe management. On the front side we have the lock for the key, alarm LED and it says emergency stop button, but this is just a regular power button. So dear sweet tool, the emergency stop button looks like this. On the right side we have some additional plugs, Y interface, probably this is the connection for the rotary roller for the engraving of the cylindrical objects because it will replace the Y axis, USB connection, reset button, HDMI plug, uh, probably this is for connection some external screens, this is the plug for the external antenna, type C, USB, input for the power and I'm not sure what is this output, maybe this is originally imagined power for the air assist pump but not for this version. In that case, actually, we could operate the pump over the software. In case you will need it, this is a tensioner for the belt on the Y-axis. So we have to lose this bolt and then place the tension on this one and then tie this back. And something similar we have on the X-axis. This USB plug is for refreshing the firmware, for example, with this USB drive. And this one, Type-C, is for connecting with the laptop to operate the laser engraver over the software. Great thing about this laser engraver is that it is completely assembled. All I have to do is to mount this holder for the laser module and the laser module will slide up and down inside. And I have to connect the air assist pipes and give it the power and it's ready for the using. A 
According to the instructions, the laser cable and the air pipe goes into the same holders, but I don't want to reduce the cross section of this pipe because I want that air to move freely. So I use two additional holders because basically we have spare parts too. From the software I will use both the Liber, which is some kind of industry standard, for the testing mostly because there I can combine different speeds, but I will also test with the laser GABL, which is free but available only for Windows. I just turn on the machine and it is completely silent, so this means that we have some kind of standby position. Yes, it is a luxury in the laser engraving industry. <laughs> These are the materials I'm regularly using in this kind of video, so the results are comparable with each other. Different thickness of the wood, 20mm wood, MDF wood, stainless steel, anodized aluminum, black acrylic, and uh, at the end I will have some kind of documentation for this engraver. I'm starting with the engraving of 3mm thick plywood, and for the engraving I'm not using the air assist. Setting the focus for the engraving. Let's do one homing. Mm. Now I notice that we have the positioning laser, this cross, uh, but here is the nozzle, so I have to know what is the offset between these two. Unfortunately, this information is not in user manual, so I place the positioning laser on this cross and then I will do engraving of another one. In my case, the offset is 15 mm in X direction and 2 mm in Y direction, but actually I found that later in a user manual it is the ESP500 command and we can even calibrate it if necessary. But since this shield is quite transparent, I will just use the weak laser point for the positioning. Let's start with the framing. Position is good, safety glass is on, and let's start with the engraving. It is so great that it turns off the fan when it's finished, so this is the 60% line, this is 100% power line, Speed in millimeters per minute from 1000 to 6000. I think I like the best this one here on 3000 millimeters per minute, 60% power. And I will try to use the laser GBL to engrave my logo here. This is now laser GBL. I already installed the driver and set the command baud ports. Let's import a picture. Vectorize. Here you can see my settings so 300 millimeters per minute and 60% power. 20 by 20 millimeters. Create. Connect. Boundary check. Hmm, this looks really great. There are no waves from the vibrations and the lines are really sharp. But now let's engrave some grayscale image. This is the real time speed and I'm engraving this image from the Liburn and it will be finished approximately in 2 minutes and 10 seconds. The real engraving time was 2 minutes 50 seconds and actually this really looks great. These lines are error in a plywood and the settings I use here, the speed is uh, 12,000 mm per minute, 60% power and line interval 0.1 mm. And it's time to start the cutting. I'm starting with this 3mm thick plywood. And now the focus goes lower for the cutting. For the cutting, I'm using the RSC's pump, but I have to turn it manually. Wow, <laughs> it walks away. <laughs> Stay there. The RSC is on, and I will speed up this part. The cutting was successful at 400 mm per minute speed, full power, and we have very nice sharp uh, edges here. And I can see in X direction it is stronger compared to the Y direction. Usually I'm using these engravers inside the enclosure so I can exhaust the smoke and the fumes. But for the demonstration I'm using it here. But I opened that door and on the other side so the smoke and fumes will go out quickly. And now side by side let's see effect of the air assist. This is cutting without air assist. I forgot to enable the camera for the air assist cutting, but the difference is quite obvious. So this cutting is much cleaner, nice sharp edges, but also it is safer because it reduces the risk of the catching the flame. Well, the documentation card is prepared, and now I can move to the 6mm plywood cutting. Again, setting the focus for the cutting. The air assist is on, let's start with the cutting and I will speed it up a little bit.
So the first look, the cutting was successful on 200 mm per minute speed, but I can see on the other side that it was almost cutting out on 300. Let's try to push it out. So actually it was coated on that small corner, but uh, this means it can cut 6 mm plywood even on 300 mm per minute speed. Now I don't really like these black spots here, I need one quick experimenting for this. In Lightbird I will disable the concert power mode. Not 100% sure, maybe it is a little bit smaller, but very similar to this one, so it doesn't help too much. But the cutting out part is super nice. And now cutting of the 3mm MDF, which is really hard for cutting for some weak laser engravers, and let's try to do it somewhere here. The cutting was successful and nice on 200 mm per second speed, on 3 and 400 not really, and I can see quite a lot of smoke, and this is typical when the laser cannot go through it, then the air assist goes back and resulting these burn edges. This means the best results you will always get if you are able to cut it in one pass. And this is the other side, no marks at all. Now I want to see what can I do with this 20mm softwood. I will do cutting in one pass on 100mm per minute speed in Y direction because it is weaker and I will measure the penetration of the laser. What? <laughs> one pass, crazy. Well, this was really a pleasant surprise, I didn't expect this from the 24 watt dyed laser, so this was cut in one pass, and look how nice are both surfaces. So this means these four dyed lasers inside the module are uh, oriented great, so they are not focused in one point, but they prolong the laser, so it has really great cutting capabilities, even deeper. And this looks nice from each side, actually. And now let's try cutting of 3mm thick black acrylic, and usually the settings are very similar to the cutting of that MDF wood. The framing is always hard with this black acrylic, but uh, I cannot see the laser spot, I can see that positioning red point. Cutting of 2, 3 and 400mm per minute speed, this fall out, but I can see this is also cut and completely just a small press and it will fall out. Mm, the last one not only, maybe I can see small holes in the corners only. But these parts are quite sharp and nice. I hate that smell of the burnt black acrylic, but with anodized aluminum there are no fumes, no smoke, it is not sensitive to settings, so I really like to work with anodized aluminum. These stocks are from Churbaca company, and it is not even sensitive to settings, so I will try to engrave here some circles. from 2000 to 10,000 mm per minute speed full power, and I think this tool looks uh, quite equal, so I would suggest using the 4000 mm per minute speed full power. And now engraving of the stainless steel, this is the plate I'm regularly using here, and you can see it is quite warped because I usually over melt it, I go with very slow speeds. 100, 200, 300 millimeters per minute, this is too slow, and recently I realized that I can go much faster to have nice permanent engraving, but I don't have to overmelt the material. Mm, okay, these settings are a little bit too weak, uh, 2000 millimeters per minute speed and 60% power, well let's try 1000 millimeters per minute and 80% power. So 1000 mm per minute speed, 80% power did that magic and it's definitely there much better and as you can see I cannot remove it. Just a small suggestion for the end because these settings looks okay for this uh, dyed laser, but I think I could reduce the line step, it says 0.1, maybe 0.01 because I can see those line steps. So final thoughts for the end, but well, really decent laser engraver with many pleasant surprises. One of those was that deep cutting. I didn't expect that it will cut this 20 mm wood in one pass along the y-axis, which is actually weaker in this case. I really like its cable management, even the air assist pipe is inside this drag chain, and I also really like that we have this standby mode. When it finishes the engraving or cutting, it will turn off the fan, it will be completely silent. Don't forget, by default, it will not arrive with air assist, you have to buy it separately. Not sure why I got this version, which used the AC power, 
because I can see the power plug on the laser engraver, it is DC power, but if I would have that kind of pump, I could turn on and off the air from the software. Of course, this advantage we have only if you use the light bar, but even that it would be good to have that functionality. A small suggestion to the Svitol to put some kind of protection plate in the package, from aluminum is better compared to the steel. In that case, the user can place it on the desktop to protect it during the engraving or the cutting. Of course, honeycomb grid is great for the cutting, but that plate would be minimum. And don't forget, use it in good ventilated room, and if you use it regularly, build some kind of enclosure and exhaust that smoke outside of that room. This was my experience with Svitol E24 Pro. If you have some additional experience, write me a few lines down in the comment section. Thank you for watching and happy and safe engraving.